And hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Bora, Fate of the Ages. Yes, it's been a while since we um, had fun here in the world of Dragast and everywhere else. But um, once again, we're here with Umang, and we're trying to save the Sacred Rings and the um, Tetrahedrons from the evil Durad, or Duran, or whoever he is that's trying to steal them. Uh, so far, Umang has managed to get the Tetrahedrons of Dragast, and he is now on his way, or has just arrived, to the world of Na Tiexu, where he is going to get the Tetrahedrons from here. And these people really like building things up above. Is that a geyser? What is that? These people really like building things way up in the air with no handrails. I mean, come on. Is there just no OSHA compliance in this world whatsoever? I mean, I don't get it. Okay, well, let's go on about this anyway. Now this gets, oh look, it's a Stargate. Okay, not really. Okay, this is probably a more complicated room than we've been dealing with. And part of the problem here, or what I consider to be a problem here, is that this room contains audio puzzles. Now I actually dislike audio puzzles. I tend to game with headphones or no sound at all, especially for adventure games. And so having audio puzzles kind of breaks my normal pattern, but okay, we'll deal with it. First thing we need to do is go over here, where we can actually find what we're supposed to be doing. Oh look, our magic book got updated. Let's see what we got in here now. Um, and of course it's going to be at the very end. Okay, what we have is we have a triangle, which goes from a small end to a high end, and some pipes below it. We also have a circular pattern, which goes from a small end to a high end, with tuning forks on it. Now, if you know anything about organ pipes, you will know that a longer pipe has a lower pitch and a shorter pipe has a higher pitch. So what this is telling us is the tuning fork with the lower pitch goes here, and medium high, medium low, highest. So the tuning forks match the organ pipes. So we're going to have to learn how to do that. The way we do that is here. See this particular one goes from low end, narrow end to wide end. It goes from high pitch to low pitch. And if I click on this Stargate, okay, did you hear that sound? We need to remember that sound. Now, I want to skip a step here and kind of show you where that's going to be used. If you look over here, there are all these little turntable platter things. You may recognize them from the picture, and you can see there are tuning forks sitting all around. So I'm going to go over here to this side, and you notice there's a little globe above the turntable. And you see, that's the same sound we just heard. So this turntable matches that Stargate over there. Just to confirm that. Yeah, that's definitely the same sound, and it goes from highest pitch to lowest pitch. Let's listen to these others. This one goes from highest pitch to lowest pitch also, but the two in the middle, you see, they're in kind of reverse order. And it sounds like this. third one, over here, goes from lowest pitch to highest pitch, and sounds like... Sounds like a foghorn, kind of. And the last one, way over here, goes from lowest pitch to highest pitch, with the middle two reversed, and it sounds like...
All right. Now we can start putting these things together. And if you're like me, you may have to go back and forth a few times to memorize all those, but that's okay. We've got all of them. Let's start at this guy. Now that tone you may recognize was actually the second technique that I did. That tone was actually from this guy, which if you remember was highest pitched to lowest pitched and the middle two reversed. So what we need is the highest pitch tuning fork needs to go here, the lowest pitch tuning fork needs to be there, and these two need to be in reverse order. So I'm going to pick up the first tuning fork here and tap it here to hear it. So that's what it sounds like. Now I'm just going to stick that in my inventory for now. Then I'm going to pick up this one. So he's lowest, lower pitched than the one I just heard. So if you remember, this thing went from highest pitch all the way around to lowest pitch with the middle two in reversed. So it would be highest, next highest, next lowest, lowest. Now this one's lower, so it needs to go here. And the other one I picked up was a little higher, so it goes here. So again, highest, lowest, next highest, next lowest. Now let's look at this one. That was the same as the last one we looked at, which was over there. You can't see it from here, but that one actually went from lowest pitched to highest pitched with the middle two reversed. So lowest pitched, highest pitched, next highest, next lowest. Okay? So let's listen. We've already picked up one, and I tapped it by accident, so that's kind of a low tone. This one is pretty high. And this one is higher than the first one, but lower than the last one. Now remember, this guy went lowest pitched, highest pitched, next highest, next lowest. Or, wait. Lowest, lowest, next lowest, next highest. So this is here. The highest pitched one, which I think was the second one I picked up. No, that was the lowest pitched one I picked up. So the lowest pitched one is the one we started with. And the highest pitched one is the one we finished, finished with. Okay, these two should be right. Let's go look at the other side. This guy That's that kind of foghorn sound that came from here. Now you notice he's straight lowest to highest. So we just need him to go lowest, highest. So which order of these sounds the highest? Probably that guy. Yep. And that leaves this guy. That was actually the very first one we listened to. And if you remember, the very first one we listened to went straight highest, lowest. So highest, lowest. So just the lowest one has to go over here. It's probably not the lowest. Yep. Now, if we've done everything correctly, we can just push this button and activate the whole machine. And oh look. Now, 
Now, I've been joking that these were stargates, but they actually, in a sense, are, because they actually lead us to another world. But we don't go through the gate itself. We go through that door. We couldn't go through that door before until we actually activated this machine. Now, we're going to do these in order. I'm going to start here with this one. Now, I activate it not here, but here. And if you notice, the light over the corresponding one is now flashing. That indicates that this doorway is active. And this will take us to another world. Now, I kind of like this world, personally. It's like an orbit around Jupiter or something. But, yeah, it's kind of cold looking out here, so let's go inside. Only one way to go. Up the stairs. Oh, remember how back in Dragost I was talking about how when you clicked on a stairway, it gave you this little animation of you swooshing up the stairway, did the same thing back in Ademico, or Ademic. It doesn't do it here. In fact, it doesn't do that anymore for the rest of the game. I don't know why. I actually wonder if different teams worked on different parts of this game. Why are the little cell phone towers out there? What are those for? Ah, oh, whatever, let's go inside. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in here, but we really can't do anything with any of it yet. In fact, we're going to be told we don't even need to be here. We need to go over and talk to this guy. Greetings, my teacher. Hello, chosen one. I'm here to retrieve the tetrahedron of Natyeksu. I understand, but what you seek is not here. Not here? Then where is it? You will find it when you are ready. For now, your task is to gather all the artifacts of Nat Yexu. I can give you the Stardust, or to be more precise, help you put it together. But you will first need to find the Grain of Life. Look for it somewhere within the spirit world. Without it, you will be unable to accomplish your purpose. Thank you, my teacher. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Okay, there's a rebellion going on. You know, a coup, if you will. Is there a lion in here? And the only way to prevent disaster, mayhem, whatever, is for me to gather the tetrahedrons and the rings and assemble them. And everyone seems to be aware of this. No one questions me coming around getting these things. But no one really wants to help either. So it's kind of like, what? what's this all about? You know, I don't know. Okay, he told me I had to go to the spirit world. That's actually this guy, the second position here. So we'll go to the second world. It's way over there. And let's go see what we can find here. Well, this is different. It's first time it's been not cold or dark, because every place else has been cold and dark, but whatever. There's all these statues here, but we can't do anything with them yet, because we don't know what we're doing yet. And you see, I can't be a kleptomaniac yet. So I'm going to go in here, and we're going to... Where's the path? It's the path I'm in this gets a little odd sometimes. And we're going to talk to... Grandma over here, he's making chocolate chip cookies, apparently. Hello. Hello, young man. I need to find the tetrahedron of Natyeksu. It is not here, but there is a spirit that can help you. Without this spirit, you will not be able to find the tetrahedron. How can I find this spirit? Put together the seven mood figures and come back to me. I will. Well, that was less than useful, but okay. At this point, we can start picking up these little symbols. Now, she calls them mood figures, so, or, yeah. So this guy's quite happy, you see. He's a little happy guy, so we're just going to call him our happy, happy guy. So I've got a happy guy. Go out here. 
go ahead and pick up this guy. He's really frowning. You know, he's not happy. He's the unhappy frowning guy. Over here, we need to go into this hole. Take that guy up on the way out. Go through this hole. There's a place up here which has one of these guys. Now he's screaming like he's afraid of something. Ah! So, you know, we'll pick him up. We'll call him the scared guy. Sorry, lost my path there for a second. This guy is... Oh, he's... Look at his eyes. It's like he's crying. Now I'll pick up this guy. He's expressionless, neutral. He's not doing anything. Okay, I can get this guy. He's kind of a frown, you know, maybe not too un not too happy, not too unhappy. Let's see what we have here. Oh, I'm gonna make a odd stop here. Notice where I am at this intersection. Right here there is a leaf on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and pick up that leaf. The reason is you don't want to know how many hours it took me to find that leaf before. We'll get to it later. And we'll get this guy who is... Oh, he's shocked. He's got an O face up. Now we should have seven little figures here. So we've got... Oh, really unhappy and crying. We've got O-Face, we've got Shocked, Surprised, we've got Neutral, we've got Happy, we've got Real Sad, and we've got Really Angry. And we need to remember these. Now we're going to go over here. Oops, I'm actually getting ahead of myself. I have to do something else first. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, make, I'm making you backtrack. Yeah, you'd think as many times as I went through this figuring out this game, I would have remembered that, but okay. Hi, Grandma, I got the mood figures. I have done what you have asked me to do. Good. Now take that grail over there and go to the main deity of the island. If you are able to accomplish the task set before you by the deity, then he will reward you with the spirit you require. I understand. Well, I'm glad you do, Umang, because it makes no sense to me, but okay. Oops. Pick up the grail first. I am getting in too much of a rush here. There we go. Alright. Not sure why they call that a grail, but. That's what they call it. Now I can go where I was trying to rush off to earlier. Yeah, I played this game like a dozen times to get set up for these walkthroughs, and sometimes you forget what you're doing. Okay, here's the grail. Put it in the hands of the statue. Now I can look here, and it will tell me the various things. It will show me all the symbols, like shot, sat, crying. Let's see, it gets me all up in there. And the order of them is important. The order of them is really important, because that's what tells us how to place these next. Let's look at them again. Okay. So it looks like the first guy there was the guy who was afraid of something. The second guy was sad and crying. The third guy was the unhappy one. The fourth guy was the shocked O-face one. Number five was just the 
neutral plain expression. Number six was the really mad and angry guy, and number seven was the guy who was really happy about being on the statue. Now what we have to do is put these on these seven pillars. Now the order we put them in has to do with this vine you see growing along the ground. Now the vine comes out of the woods, or the rocks, over there. So we need to start over there with this pillar. Now if you remember, the first guy is the guy who was afraid. So that looks like the afraid, the, oh, help me, statue there. Now from here, you notice that the vine goes and wraps around this one. So you need to go there second, which is right here. Now the second one was the guy who was just kind of sad. You know, he was sad and crying right here. In fact, that's the first one. I didn't do that. This guy, he's sad and crying, so we're going to put him here. Now the statue goes over to there. Oops. So he needs to be on this one. So he's the third one. Now the third guy was, he was just kind of frowny and unhappy. He wasn't, you know, crying or anything. He just wasn't really happy. That's this guy. Okay. From here we go to the one in the middle. Right here. And I'm not in the right position yet. Look at this guy. You see I'm coming from there. This is number four, which is the guy who is... That's our O-Face guy. Okay, from here, looks like we... Comes around, goes there... Moves back, goes way over there. Okay. This one. It's number five. This is the guy who has just no expression at all. He's completely neutral. From here, we just go literally next door. This should be our completely angry, mad at the world guy. And that just leaves one which is way over there. Yeah, which is the guy who's just so happy to be a statue. And if we've done this right, oh look. We now have captured the spirit and the grail. So, we need to go back and see what we need to do next. So let's head back up here. Because, oh no, we are not finished with this world by a long shot. Let's go tell Cookie Bacon Grandma that we got the girl, Spirit of the Grail now. Hi, we got it. The astrologist told me that in order to obtain the Stardust, I will first need the Grain of Life. That is true. Go and talk to my young helper. She will give you everything that you need to get the grain. Thank you. Yeah, don't want to interrupt your serious cookie baking mode here. Yeah, that's the helper. Who is playing Pong with herself apparently and just looks so shocked that she can do it. Hello. 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 Can you tell me how I can find the grain of life? Of course. There is an old tree stump inside a cave on the top of the hill. You will find the grain within its roots. I see. It's dark in the cave. So take some flower manna from the shelf over there. You will need it to light your way. Thank you. And go back to playing Pong. Okay. The flower manna is actually this little thing right here. Apparently Umang learned that somewhere along the line because there's nothing to distinguish it from all this other stuff over here. And once again, these people just think nothing of, oh, you're looking for this holy artifact? Sure, it's right over there. You know. Don't these people know that there's a coup underway? Or maybe not. Whatever. 
And anybody find it odd that, oh, there's a tree stump inside a cave. But we'll talk about that in a minute. This is through the little hole over here that we went through earlier. And then we go down here. All we can do at this point is put the um, flower mana. Where's the flower mana? I picked that up, didn't I? There it is. Oh, why could I not pick that up? Okay, we've lit it up. Now, notice this doesn't look like a tree stump. That looks more like a pile of rocks. The tree stump is actually up here. Now we can click on this at this point, and it doesn't do anything. It looks more like a garlic clove than tree stump. I mean, it's a little confusing, but anyway, we can't do anything yet. So we have to go back and find out what's going on. Turn too soon. Let's go talk to the assistant here. Still playing her game. I cannot open the stump's roots. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot. Take that vial of poisonous smoke. It should help. Then there is just one more step and the grain of life will be yours. One more step? What do you mean? It's not too difficult. Figure it out for yourself. Well, thanks anyway. Yeah, thanks for being helpful. This is the poisonous smoke, and personally I'm a little nervous of any policy that starts with, or any procedure that starts with, take the poisonous smoke. <sighs> okay. And again, doesn't this seem a little extreme? Oh yes, in order to pass this test, you have to poison something. It's not something you want people doing idly, but... Okay, let's go down here. We put the poisonous smoke here. And then I have to click it again to open it. And shouldn't I have left the room while I was fumigating it? <coughs> okay, sorry. Now it opened and... okay. The grain of life is actually one of these things, but we can't get to it. Remember we had one more thing we had to do? We have to go shake the bushes. And... okay, I have to ask a question here. Why is there a hand rope here? I'm in a narrow path completely enclosed by rock on either side and they decide, oh, this place needs a handrail. Meanwhile, the other opening, where I am hanging thousands of feet in the air on a narrow platform, oh, we're perfectly safe here. We don't need to worry about that. I worry about these people. No wonder they're getting having a military coup against them. I have to shake the bush. This angle, those things like duck heads or something. And one of them fell off, because obviously it would have been too difficult for me to reach up and pick one off myself. But, okay, we are dealing with the man here, so who knows. Let's go in here. The thing did fall from up there. Now, it's somewhere in the room. You may have to hunt for it a while. I'll help you. It's right here. The lighting up cursor gave it away. And we're actually done for the moment. So... He's firing a phaser. So we need to head back to the astrology world now. And finish what we're doing with this.
Remember, Astrology World was the first. Reactivate this guy. And go back to talk to the Astrologist. I can't just talk to him. I have to show to him that I have actually found the grain of life. Excellent! Now we can get right to work. For starters, the grain will need to be cleaned. You will find everything you need in the room. Once the grain is cleaned, place it where the five dragons stand. When it begins to glow, it will be ready to be transformed into the stardust. All right, there's all kinds of stuff in this room. I'm going to start by going over here and picking up those two little statues. Those are statues of dragons. We're going to need them in a minute. Then I'm going to go over here to pick up some more things. I need this thing, and I need this thing. And while we're here, I'm going to pick up this book, because it's going to show me what I'm going to need to do in a minute. And yes, that makes perfect sense. Don't worry. Now we need to go over here. Now remember I just picked up a little container that looked like that? We're going to put it here. We're going to put this, um, where'd it go? this pot with plants here. And then I'm going to put my grain of life within the shell here. Then I can just pour all three of these at once. And that is the hard way to shell a pistachio. Okay, we pick it up. Now we have to go over here, where the five dragons stand. Well, actually, there's only three dragons here. We have to make two more dragons to stand there. Then we put the grain of life without a shell here. And I don't know about you, but when I hear this involves dragons, I suspect they're going to breathe flame all over the thing. Uh, they don't. They just sort of glare at it. Missed opportunity there, guys. Dragons, flame. Keep it in mind. And look, I automatically picked that up. Now let's go tell this guy that... Oh, look, I did what you wanted me to do. Here it is. Again, I have to show him that I actually did it. You have done everything correctly. Now, go upstairs and put the planets into their proper alignment. You must discover the correct solution by yourself. Okay. Now, this gets a little tricky. But, of course, we've got it. We go up the, Now we get to go up this stair. And at the top of the stairs is this display. Now, if you remember those symbols there... They look at, they're the same symbols that were added to our book, right here. I have these two symbols with that in the middle, those two symbols with that, and so on. Now then, this just tells me that that symbol corresponds to one. That corresponds to two. That to three. And this to four. Now, why the ordering didn't do it, and I had to use the little elevator symbol here to figure that out, who knows. Um, that goes back downstairs. We're going to go outside. And we're going to deal with this contraption here. 
first thing I need to do is put this, uh, put my tree of life, or seed of life, or whatever it is, in here. With a little candle holder. That will cause this drone to come flying over, pick it up, and carry it away. And I will point out that Umang does not seem to be the least bit startled or surprised or anything of this. I mean, this is probably what a Roomba looks like with him. I mean, you got to wonder, what kind of world these people live in? All right. What I have here is a device. There's eight holes here, and there's eight little stones that I have that... Um, correspond to things that I have, that book we picked up earlier. See how this thing, for example, he's got two little arrows pointing at a line. Stick him in my inventory for a moment. That corresponds to this. See, there's two little arrows pointing at a line. And this symbol means, if you remember, that was the one symbol we got from the little elevator thing. That means these two stones, or the stones with these two symbols on them, have to be one line apart. Now, or one space apart. Now, it's a little easy at first because you see this guy can't go everywhere. In fact, he will only go there. Now, the other guy, which was the little T-shaped symbol, that's him, means he can be placed here or here. Now, I'll save some effort. He can only go here. Now, let's look at the second row. The second row gives us, that's kind of an I or an H if you turn it sideways. That's kind of a sideways TIE fighter looking thing, and they have to be three apart. Now, in this one, we can, um, uh, where's the first one I need to pick up? This guy. See, that's the kind of that H, or the TIE fighter thing. Now, he can only go, again, in certain places, he can only go here. Now, these had to be three apart. Now, remember the one that was the H or the I? He can't go there, because that one's already occupied, so he has to go here. Now, our third row, which has to be two apart, excuse me, four apart, is basically, it's a little circle with a notch in it, and that complicated looking thing. Now, the little circle with the notch in it is um, actually here. See, that's a circle with the notch in it. You gotta accept that these things work the way they are. Again, he only goes one place. And they had to be four apart. So one, two, three, four, the, or one, two, three, four, the, he has to go here. Now, his um, opposite number is um, this guy. Remember that little kind of side cut T shaped thing? That leaves these two. Now, unfortunately, these two can go in either of these two positions. So, let's just try putting them in the nearest positions. And if that doesn't work, we'll reverse them. Activate the Stargate here and see what happens. Ah, obviously that was the correct one, because something is happening. things come with little angelic courses, courses there. Alright, it brought it back to me. And I now have the Stardust, which is the mystical item of Nati Exu from this world. So now I have the Stardust, and I have the Grail with the Spirit. I also have that leaf I picked up for a random reason, and an unknown amulet. Where did I get that unknown amulet anyway? Let's head back down. And we're actually done here. We have nothing to do. We can even talk to the astrologist over here. And believe it or not, we're only halfway through. We've got two more worlds we have to go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the Stargate room where all this take started. 
we're going to go there. And we're going to explore the next two worlds of Na Tiexu next time. I will see you then.